What's going on guys? Welcome to the beach. Right now, I am cutting up some frozen bait. This big old Jack Crevel that I caught in a previous video when we stuck in the freezer. And the goal of today is to take some of these big old baits, these big frozen baits, cast them off the beach, and catch some black tip sharks. So no paddling, nothing crazy, just cast it on some big spinning rods. So stay tuned, should be a great video, great day of beach fishing. Listen to that style and just sing. Whenever I am shark fishing on the beach, I'm always trying to catch some live bait because live bait's just gonna, number one, if you're using it dead, it's gonna be fresher, have a little bit more scent, or you can swim some live baits. Swimming live baits is like my favorite thing to do because you can just hook a bait in the back and let it go way further than you can cast. So you can kind of get it out to where a lot of the sharks are on the back side of the second sandbar. My best method that I found, or at least my favorite personal way to catch live bait on the beach is a bobber rig. So this is just like a normal bobber with a cup, have some mono and a little one ounce egg. So that one ounce egg is gonna allow me to cast really, really far. Then I have some light leader, this is like 30 pound leader, and this little Clark spoon. So I'm able to launch this tiny little Clark spoon well further than most of our surf rods. Also fishing it with 20 pound braid, so that helps me get some more distance. But Getting this little bait out way far off the beach puts me in the zone where there should be some jacks, mackerel, bluefish, literally something small like that that a black tip would love to eat. That's what I'm looking for. Blown up right there. Literally right in the trough. I don't know what kind of fish it was, but it was blown up. So I have this on like a 10 foot rod, 20 pound braid, so I can cast really, really far. Just take it and launch it off the beach. And it gets going pretty much further than any of our baited rods are. And then I'll kind of like to jerk it back and forth, almost like a topwater plug. Because that bobber is out there, it's got that cubbed face to it, so it's splashing around, making a bunch of commotion. And it should attract some mackerel, jacks, bluefish, something like that from far away. Because they're going to hear that splashing and be like, all right, let me go investigate. Then when they go to the area, they're going to see the little bait that they can actually fit in their mouth, that little clark spoon, and they're going to eat it. Check this bait because it's been out for a while and hasn't really gotten hit. So what'll happen a lot of the time is your bait just kind of loses all its scent and doesn't really get picked up as readily as a fresh one will. So I'll just intermittently change them. Fresh Jack Crevel. Oh, is that me? It might be me. Here you go. No way, you didn't catch something. I feel something. Oh, I got a fish. Oh, here. <laughs> I don't have anything. So give me this. Just trying to film some uh, some B-roll. Brooks rod got hit, so we run over there. I grab the camera from her, and then as my bobber's just kind of sitting there, I get hit by something. So this might be that live bait that I want. Oh yeah, Vic! Live bait! Can you reel that up? A little Spanish mackerel. Should be a perfect live bait. I'm gonna reel up my other rod, cut the weight off, and try and swim this out. Got that mackerel. Over here. See if they'll swim. It was out of the water way too long than I like for a mackerel because they die pretty easily. But I'll see if he'll swim away, otherwise we're going to use him as fresh dead bait. We just had that tangle which kind of sucks, but that's a part of fishing multiple rods on the beach. The mackerel did not make it. It wasn't able to swim very good, so Vic's going to cut him up. Because fresh bait is the best bait, and mackerel are particularly oily. Although they don't do too well 
for frozen bait because they get really mushy, fresh is exactly what you want. You want like that? Yeah, I think so. Sharks have been keying in on smaller baits today. I think they'll still eat alive if I get another one, but I'm gonna cast out a dead bait, just a chunk like this and see what eats it. Who knows, maybe a redfish or a black drum or something like that wants to eat it too. Sun's getting lower, tide's getting higher, sharks should be coming in, pompado should be coming in. I got some high hopes. Get this, get go. I also don't feel like I was casting it out enough far enough with my heavy rod, so I switched to this nine footer and cast a little bit further. It's got some lighter braid on it and the rod's a little bit longer, so should be fine for black tips. I just wanted to try and see if I could get one on the Spheros, which I still will. I'm gonna reserve that. Wow, I just saw a black tip jump way out there. He just jumped and spun. That was a big black tip. Hope they start coming in. Full size black tip was just jumping. Oh my God, is he hooked up to it? Yeah. That guy's hooking more sharks than we are and he's not even shark fishing. The heck's going on out here, man? That's what we want. It's like a six foot black tip. Well, he's basically here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll grab him. We need to get the flyers. Hey, it's getting bigger. It's a little bit bigger. Here, give me your other one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, he is way far away. Holy cow. Okay. <laughs> play by play. I was casting, trying to catch another shark bait. Had this rod out in the rod holder. And I, since I had my other rod in my hand, I came up and I was like, all right, let me tighten it while it's in the rod holder real quick. Broke my sand spike, just cracked in half. But the shark is just ripping drag right now, so I'm gonna have to tighten up on him a little bit. He is angry getting away from me. Man, that thing ripped. Look at how much line's missing. That thing was going, that's why. Man, sharks on the beach on spinning gear, so much fun. I remember years ago when we used to do a lot of uh, land-based shark fishing with like the big rods, like 80 wides, 14 O's with like, you know, 130 pound mainline trying to catch big hammerheads and stuff like that. You catch a black tip, but you were so overpowered on the black tip that it wouldn't be able to pull drag. But catching them on gear like this, they're like the ultimate game fish. They're jumping, spinning, <laughs> ripping drag. That is just fun, man. He choked that mackerel too. That fresh mackerel seems like it was the key. We uh, didn't really get many bites we got one bite on the jack that uh was a shark but other than that just been the mackerel doing work so well worth it to try and catch your own bait on the same day Vic and i have been fishing together for quite a long time now and this is kind of what we started doing together right <laughs> shark literally. fishing on the beach it, it was literally <laughs> me ryan and brooke was the original dream team and you got to help the first time whoa Listen to that Siowa just sing. This is a oh, he's one, charging it? towards me. He didn't come off, did he? Nope. He just charged, charging the beach. Holy cow. These things are like Bonita on steroids. With teeth. With teeth. Got a fish wire. Bonita in one. That thing ripped. Ah, oh, this is fun, man. You want to grab it? No. Yeah, that's fine. I'll grab them. Grab the flames. <laughs> oh, man. Whew. I thought I was going to lose it. Vic, did you see my sand spike explode? <laughs> uh oh, oh, is that me? In your line? I think you're in both of them. Let's figure out if you're in. Can you see my weight? Probably cut my weight. He's gonna run. Here, step over it. We got a mackerel hanging on the line. We need that thing, that's good bait. 
that your bait? Yeah, that's my bait. You want to grab the bait off the line? Oh my god. That's a good bait, dude. We can reuse that. You just don't let the things get your um. Bang! Hold on to the line! I got the line. I got the line. Sorry, dude. You're... Off? Yeah. Ugh. Okay, I'll take full responsibility for that. What did the, you even do? Did you guys not see the mackerel? Your line was in the mackerel's mouth. Yeah, it was in the teeth. In the teeth. Is he all gone? So I tried to rip I tried to rip his jaw off and then we tried to grab the line and now I owe Ryan a bunch of break. Dude, I'm sorry. Where did it break off though? Listen. I'm very confused. Listen. Explain how you hooked them and what well, I hooked them. I hooked them through the mouth. Mackerel got some sharp teeth. But it didn't really cut me off, did it? I can say I'm a pretty easygoing guy when I go fishing. A lot of the time you don't catch anything, and that's whatever. What upsets me is when I make bonehead mistakes, like hooking that mackerel through the top of the mouth, and then having your bait literally cut your line while you're fighting the shark that you've been waiting all day for. That's the type of stuff that kind of upsets me. It even upsets me because like, even though I know I had all the best intentions, you still feel guilty when you break off your buddy's fish, even though you were trying to help him. Yep. But yeah, eh. what Ryan means is he had it hooked through the jaw. So if this slid up the line like this, and we just had the, uh, this is a chunk of jack. If it was sliding on your line, the meat's not gonna do anything. It's just going to, it's just gonna potentially attract another shark to bite your line. But when you have mackerel teeth rubbing on your line, game over. We got like another 20, 30 minutes of sunlight. So hopefully we can get one. Or two or three. Big one? Oh, it's a big one. Get him, Brooke. How do you with this <laughs> There's nothing comfortable about a 12 to 13 foot rod. Then as we started to pack up, I saw a bunch of stuff busting like right in front of our beach cart. So I just casted out the bobber rig, caught a mackerel real quick. This one is kind of swimming and the swell's laying down a little bit. So maybe, just maybe, we got a couple more minutes of light. I can hook a black tip real quick. Fingers crossed, boys. Vic, you got confidence? Oh yeah. I always have a confidence in the live mackerel. Live mackerel, sunset bite, high tide. Yeah, it's true. They should be around. I don't know why they wouldn't be. Well, the uh, mackerel are chewing today, and oh my god, look at that. Look at the glass minnow in his mouth. Oh, he just spit it up. They're chewing on glass minnows. You can almost see the tail. He's going to bite me. Oh, look at that. You can see the tail of them, and the mackerel are just busting everywhere. I just threw a chunk out. Huh? Here, hand me this run. Big. Oh god. Come on, eat it. This has to be bluefish. Because the sharks are just ripping when they take it. I don't know. Yeah, he's not on there. I think the bluefish are just going to town on these mackerel, the mackerel sharks. The mackerel's just got so much oil to it. That's why I love using it for bait. But I want a black tip to pick it up. And you know it's a black tip because they just get to pick it up and run. And like all these little tap, 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 tap. It's all like a, a wolf pack of bluefish. Check it, see what these bluefish have done to my poor mackerel bait. Look at that sunset though. I mean, it is gorgeous out here. Oh, yep, they cleaned me out. All right, well, I got the other half of the last mackerel. Shark that I lost. 
if you guys remember, I hooked him through the mouth like that. So we're not gonna make that same mistake again because those sharp teeth of that mackerel, I'm pretty sure is uh, why my line ended up breaking and why there's frays in my line still. So I'm running against time right now. We got like five minutes of sun. Fingers crossed. Can we get a buzzer beater shark? I like catching mackerel, but man, are they slimy. And they have these little scales that just get on everything. <laughs> it's so gross. When I used to commercial fish for them, I would have like caked on scales all across my forearms. Just <laughs> super nasty. Not something that uh, I ever want to touch if I don't have to, but you know, when you're fishing, you have to touch them. Let's see if we can pop another mackerel real quick. Took another mac. Oh, did he come off? No, no, he's still on there. It's like I wasn't catching anything, casting all day long, and as soon as the sun goes down, feeding window for these fish. Come on, buddy. Look at that. This is why this is my favorite rig on the beach. Catches jacks, catches mackerel. I saw a bunch of dudes casting stuff. No one caught anything on lures. Super slimy guy. Since we're at the end of the day, and we got enough bait. I'm gonna let this guy live. I'm just gonna let him go. I think the blue fish are uh, gaining confidence because I just got hit and it actually pulled drag this time, but nothing on there. Oh, oh! I gotta like let him eat it or something. I don't know. Let him run with it. They are angry on it though. You can't, this is a very stiff rod, so it's kind of hard to see looking at the rod tip, but I can feel it. It's boom, 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 boom. Just like taking bites out of that mackerel. I might not have any bait left now. We caught the bait thief. This is the last bait of the night. And this is what's been stealing all our baits. Big old bluefish. Wow. This right here has been what's stealing all our baits. Bluefish, and they swim around in packs of like, I don't know, like 20, 30, 100, and they just ravage those dead baits. Somehow I hooked him with that big shark hook. Unhook him and just rehook him, ready to swim, right next to the anal fin, just like that. I'm just gonna cast him out and let him swim. These are like my favorite baits to swim because they actually swim, unlike mackerel. As long as you keep a little bit of tension on them because they're hooked backwards, it's gonna make them swim out. And he's just gonna keep going and just keep going. And I just keep a little bit of tension with my fingers on the line. Sometimes I give him a little jerk when he stops. It's just all about keeping it tight. And when you get eaten, you know it. It starts taking off. Vic knows. It's been, uh, been a couple years since we've been swimming baits with the boys off the beach, but uh, it's a good feeling when they get eaten. This is why I uh, fish reels with a little bit of sealing capability because on the beach they get covered in sand. Why is it so sandy? Because my hands are sandy and I'm, a just, I'm like that kid in the peanuts that has the cloud of dust around him. I always just get sand and dirt on me. The shower twice a day just to keep it all off. So I just had it rip out of my hands really, really fast. I don't know if it's a shark running at me or what. Or he ripped it off the hook. I think he ripped it off the hook. Oh my God, that's heartbreaking. It swam so far out there. And I think it just ripped it off. I didn't even have a lot of tension. Oh my God. Whoa! That's the way it goes sometimes. Dude. You feel like that. But it, he definitely got picked up. I 100% got picked up because he was just swimming, cruising at the same rate. And then me and Vic are just talking on the beach and it just ripped. And then nothing, and Did then slack. Cut? Ah, man. You, got cut off. you think I got cut? Yeah. Maybe a shark swim through my line? I think so. I don't have a rig or anything. No. Let's see. Hey, you got cut. I, so there's my mono. I had like 10 feet of a 100 pound mono and something swam. Maybe when it was trying to eat the bluefish, it got that 100 pound mono in its mouth. Ah, well. Defeated on the beach might be the title of this video. I'm not really sure. The I, day of heartbreak. The day of heartbreak, big baits, big mistakes, something like that. 
Big thanks to Victor and Brooke for helping me out as always. And big thanks to you guys for watching. It was a fun day. We got no light, we got no bait. I'm gonna close the video out right here. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.